No, I should say that I got interested in this subject because originally I was in Chinese studies and then Burmese studies, but also because I felt that the foreigners, the Westerners, especially in the United States, was not paying attention to the strategic importance of Burma and Myanmar. And that for years our policy was a single strand policy based on democracy and human rights. That's a reasonable strand, but it should be one of many. And those many strands should have strategic issues, uh, economic issues, trade, investment, all of those things considered, as we do with most other countries. But we did not do that with Myanmar. And so for a long time I have been interested in trying to spread the word that this is important. I held a conference in Georgetown um, in 2001, um, Burma nexus on the Bay of Bengal, to try and convince the administration that this was significant. It had no effect in my, as far as I know. Uh, but I began to get interested in the topic and began to talk to people about the border and what was going on. And when Georgetown got involved in spreading uh, relationships with Chinese and universities, they asked me if I would be involved and I said yes on China and Myanmar. And the result was a collaboration with this younger professor, Mr. Fan Hong Wei, of the Institute of Southeast Asian Studies in Xiamen University in Fujian province. Xiamen is important because Fujian was the site of the many Chinese going overseas to Southeast Asia and a lot of the early trade, the ceramic trade and other kinds of trade. So it was natural that they have a Southeast Asia center. So he came to Georgetown uh, and spent a few months. We worked together by mail and then I spent some days with him in Xiamen uh, and we were working on this manuscript off and on. And finally it has come to fruition. Uh, joint authorship is not easy. It's uh, especially one that's long distance and especially one cross cultures. We had no problems about the um, policy issues. The question was to try and get a style that was consistent throughout the manuscript and he had access to these unclassified Chinese sources that basically Western writers, writers in English, have not used. And so he was able to take advantage of that. I took a rather broader perspective on the whole um, socio-political strategic issues that I have been looking at for some time. So it's been a very happy uh, relationship. I think it uh, provides a unique look at the situation. There are now several books that have dealt with China, uh, Myanmar, and India, but none of them have dealt with it in the depth that this book does. None of them have got the economic data that uh, is in our book. And I think it is, at least I hope it is, a useful contribution to the field. Uh, and uh, of course it is as up to date as we can make it, uh, and I think that uh, basic economic analyses and material will stand for quite a long period of time. So it's been a pleasure to do it and um, I have to thank uh, the Nordic Institute of Asian Studies which has been very, very helpful, uh, willing to publish more than they perhaps have wanted at the beginning, more than other publishers would have. They would have uh, probably asked us to cut the book a great deal. But the Nordic Institute was very helpful in making sure that we have all the data in there that we originally wanted to put in.